Hey guys, Steve at Top Guns. Want to tell everybody thanks for uh, being a part of the channel and for sending in the uh, request for different types of videos. The uh, one of the requests that we received recently was a guy sent in a request wanting to know what criteria I look for when I'm picking out a gun for myself. And um, although depending on the use and the purpose of the firearm and the type of firearm, that criteria changes slightly. For today's purposes, we're going to look at handguns, and as I would choose one for defensive purposes. So, uh, when it comes to a carry weapon, you know, I think above all, uh, the most important element that you have to have included in it is reliability. And for those of you that are in the industry and you've had a chance to shoot weapons that aren't reliable, you realize how critical of a component this is. For those of you that are new to the industry and uh, you've not had a chance to shoot a lot of different handguns, then uh, you may not understand quite just yet uh, how important that is and how hard it can be to clear a jam, especially under stress. So, and that certainly comes with training. So reliability uh, is absolutely at the top. I don't care, you know, if it's not the most accurate weapon in the world, if it's not the prettiest weapon in the world, what, all, everything else is out the window. It has to go bang every time you pull the trigger. Once that's taken into consideration, and I, I now have a list of those guns that fall into that, uh, that meet that particular element, I'm now looking for durability. It's different than reliability in that durability comes down to if I get in a physical confrontation and I fall on it or it drops or it hits something, is this thing going to break or is it going to continue to function? So uh, naturally durability is going to be a very close follow-up to reliability. After that, um, it's kind of a toss-up. I'm going to go with point ability and the reason that's important is when you're choosing a weapon that uh, fits your hand well and points well for you, that can be the difference between life and death and, and neutralizing a target and not neutralizing a target. Because if, uh, you know, if you're put into a situation where you're forced to pull your weapon and perhaps you're moving at the same time and so naturally any of us that are put in that situation, unless we've done it a million times and we've been in combat, which I have not, uh, chances are we're gonna be nervous. And if we're nervous, we're probably who knows, maybe running, maybe turning, turning, but, but the one thing that probably is going to be consistent is as we pull that weapon up, we may uh, pop off a couple rounds towards the perceived threat. If you happen to have a weapon that naturally points well for you, then it may be the case that that particular weapon just ended the threat for you uh, just by the nature of being more pointable for your particular grip. Uh, next after that, and uh, again, these are almost parallel, but, but would be repeatability. How quick can I get a follow-up shot and, and, and get back down onto my target for my follow-up shots? So if I have a gun that's this hand cannon and it's recoiling and it's kicking up real high, uh, have I really done myself any justice? Because if I missed it the first shot, uh, and it takes me a, you know maybe a second and a half to get that thing back down and back on target, have I done myself any good by having this hand cannon or have I picked a, uh, have I picked a pistol that's going to end up costing me um, my life because of the fact that I, I didn't have the ability to be repeatable with it, at least not in, not in an efficient manner. After uh, repeatability, I'm going to go with uh, probably accuracy would come next. And sometimes I get asked, well, why is accuracy so down low? Well, you know, at combat uh, or defensive distances, you really don't have to be very accurate or the gun doesn't have to be super accurate. So most weapons in our shop that we sell would meet that criteria just by the nature of the weapon itself, um, which is usually seven yards or less. Having said that, you know, if you're picking a weapon that is, is just at least reasonable quality, Accuracy is almost going to be implied anyway, and so most weapons that you are that we are selling nowadays have the ability to shoot extremely accurate, and so accuracy is almost implied. Uh, but certainly, it's not necessarily required um, beyond combat accurate. <clears throat> last is price, and I say price being last. Naturally, we do have to fit everyone's budget when when you're looking for a weapon. But um, I would tell you that. Uh, you know, providing you're not getting taken advantage of and you're not overpaying for whatever particular weapon you've chosen, price shouldn't be a critical component um, subject to the fact that you just don't have the money to buy anything nicer than what you're buying. And I say that because 
you know, quality is, is so critical when you're dealing with anything that you may put your life on the line with, whether it's a set of tires that you're driving on the road with um, on the interstate, or it's a firearm that you're protecting your life with. You, you don't want to sacrifice quality when it comes to something that you may or may not um, save your own life or potentially a, a loved one or maybe just a, a bystander. Uh, I want to touch on real quick what I was talking about when I say uh, point ability and being able to control that weapon. And so when, when I go to pick a, a, a pistol for my hand, point ability is important not only because of grip angle, but also does it fit my hand properly. So for today's purposes, we're going to uh, use a SIG 320. We do try to spread the love each time we do a video and use different manufacturers. But uh, I do want to show the viewers out there that we do have a weapon that's been cleared. Okay. So uh, when I say that it needs to fit my hand, you know, I look at this weapon, and this isn't a bad fitting weapon for my hand. Uh, if you look where my, uh, I want to make sure that the gun is lining up and staying in line with the arm, and I want to make sure I'm going to get a good grip, and I'm going to turn this way. And you can see where my finger lies, and it's not a horrible grip. I'm getting the, the pad of my finger on there. Could it be a little better? Yes, it probably could be a tad bit better. And so I want to go ahead and illustrate, today I have also the SIG 320 grip that is the small grip and if you can look here <clears throat> what we've done is we've we've the distance from the back strap where the web of your hand sits all the way up to the front of the trigger and this one doesn't have a trigger in it uh, is is what's going to dictate whether or not that gun is too long for your finger so in this particular case I'm able to get a much better grip because of the fact and if you look here where where the uh, the hole for the the takedown lever is, my finger naturally reaches that pretty easily on this one, and I'm gonna go back to this one and do the same thing, and my finger falls just a little bit short. So you can see that that other frame actually got my finger up a little bit closer, and allows me to get better trigger control and also better uh, control over the weapon overall. It also helps me point a little bit better. So for my personal preference, I, if I were going to own the SIG 320, I would end up getting the, the smaller grip for my, my hand style or my hand size. Uh, I would encourage you when you're out there talking to your local gun shops and, and uh, gun shop uh, uh, sales clerks to uh, you know really look and see what's also fitting your hand so that you can have that repeatability and the follow-up shots uh, that may or you know may potentially save your life at some point. I hope this helps. Um, by all means, feel free to comment below. Let me know your opinions. Maybe I missed something, and and if I did, please let me know because I can always uh, start including it in the future as I'm as I'm talking to people and letting them know what we recommend. Thanks again. Take care.